here we are. So, let's see, the Daily Classical, Hourly Bullet. I'm playing with a different mouse, and it doesn't move as quickly, so I'm not going to do Bullet at the moment. Um, yeah, let's play a nice, calm game. I've actually slowed down for playing 3-2 to 4-2. Part of that's because of the mouse, but part of that's because um, I'm tired of opponents just being bad. Um, which tends to happen in 3-2, and not so often in 4-2. Alright. So there's e4. Um, d5, we'll take that. Ooh, a free pawn. I'll take it. No objections to that free pawn. Here, take my pawn. Oh, I have thoroughly confused him. This is good. This is good fun. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this whole gambit is a total crock. Um, there's no way that this gambit actually works. Uh, so, yeah. And then we pile up on the e-file, let him put his queen where he doesn't want to put his queen, um, blockade the pawn, and then he takes on e5, and then we get back the pawn. I think. I hope. We'll see. So yeah, he got back his pawn that he gambited. I don't know why he wanted to take the pawn back. I mean, if you're going to gambit, why not just go all the way and just continue the gambit? Because, like, here, now I've got all this pressure on the center. Um, Alright, so we're going to castle. Just because, why not? So now, okay, yeah, he takes there. That's legal. And we take the knight. And then I take back on e4. Yeah, the line is supposed to involve knight take c6. So the way we're playing it is just kind of a joke. Um, and now I've got a rook on the center file, applying some pressure. Uh, I'm actually losing the e-pawn, unless he plays that. Uh, do I want to try to hold on to the e-pawn? It's a very dangerous mission, but the alternative is going into... Oh, hang on. Never mind. I should not have done that. For reasons that will become obvious very quickly. Um, I was concerned about getting into a lost endgame, and I forgot to count pieces. Pieces are important, too. I was just worried about my e-pawn and c-pawn and getting a lost endgame, but here we actually lost an exchange. Um, yeah. And so now i got to go down here, and I'm losing the game because rook d2 just wins on the spot. But, you know, other than that, this is pretty good endgame-wise. Oh, wait. Wait. Um, never mind, this is entertaining. What a weird position. So yeah, now I just need to play h4 and get my king over to h2. Um, so he's threatening queen d4. I can't allow that. So we check. But yeah, at least I didn't quickly lose the c-pawn and e-pawn. Uh, I lost them slow and agonizingly. And this is kind of what I mean by um, in 4-2 I'm getting some real opposition, whereas in 3-2 people just blitz out moves and I would get away with this kind of nonsense. 
Um, in 4-2, I don't get away with it as much. So, f one still protected twice, believe it or not. Now, I guess he could triple with rook c1, and then I might have a bit of a problem. Um, but he didn't, so... The battle rages on. I don't know why, but it does. Um... <laughs> okay, so okay, he's reduced pressure on. Yeah, I have to. I'm thinking a lot. Okay, I mean this encourages rook c3, which um, fortunately for me does not crush me. It looks crushing, but it isn't. Yeah, rook g1 has a downside of giving up the queen. Um, but, you know, other than that, rook g1 is pretty good. Alright, and I think... Well, now he's got two pieces attacking the f1 square. Um, I think I'm still okay, though. Everything's still defended. And I've got a nice little counterattack here. Uh, I saw that, and I was going to play this. And everything's still defended here. Alright. Ah! Well played, sir. Well played. Yeah, I didn't see that <coughs> until it was a little too late. Um, so yeah, that's a good game. I don't. Su oh, I do get a rematch. Wow, this guy likes like some exciting chess. I'm gonna be like most people after seeing the kind of cheese that I played there would not want a rematch, but this guy's up for it. Um. Here we go, e5. Uh, do I take with the c-pawn? Yeah, we establish a pawn center. Alright, this weakens my e-pawn, so I need to strengthen that. And castle. Alright, and now we got all these threats here. So I'm pretty sure black is at least equalized, if not better here. Yeah, I, I'll play anything and everything in these games. It's good fun. Um, so... The only problem is I don't know this opening as well as I really should. Um, like, usually if you play an opening, you kind of sort of know what's going on. Um, well, I'm just talking about you. I don't know, like, that's not my style. I play things and just see what happens. Um, yeah, it looks absolutely nothing like a Slav. See, if I were to study the Slav, maybe I'd get something theoretical out of this. Um, but hey, I got the bishop pair. But yeah, the, I should probably play, uh, get one of my other computer games out and play that, because I'm not, I'm not playing very high-level chess here. Um, and if I'm going to, um, maybe I should do like a variant. Because the stuff of me just playing random moves, even though it's entertaining for well, for me, um, it really, I don't know. It's a disservice to uh, chess players who actually study the game. Alright, so... This knight's not ever going to end up on f4 now. 
In fact, so even though I have the bishop pair, I don't know that I want it. Uh, how many does he have attacking this? He's got one, two, three. And I've got two defending it. So I need to bring forth another piece to defend that, or I need to take on g3. And my initial impulse was to just take on g3. And then the only reason I didn't do that is because I didn't see any reasonable follow-up to it. Um, yeah, I think keeping this, keeping control of e4 is useful because his bishop is blocked by these pawns. Um, and just take the other file. And again, this bishop isn't going anywhere. It's almost as if he's played some weird kind of French here. Um, everybody hates the Slav because nobody knows it. I'm, I'm guessing that that's the reason. Like, that's why I used to hate seeing it in tournaments um, played against me. Because, uh, like, um, I don't have the time to study all the lines. Or, let's say, not the time. I don't have the discipline to do it. Might have the time. Or at least at that time I might have. Um, so, yeah, how do I develop here? Well, let's cut off this knight so it can't do stupid things. Okay, rook a c1. See, I was thinking I was just going to play b5 if rook a c1 got played. And b5 would make it more difficult for him to get his knight into c5 because there's no way to get there. Okay, so this other knight is considering going uh, to f4. Uh, but now he's loosened pressure on the center, right? Again, my bishop doesn't have any useful target at the moment. Um, I could consider b4. Because my center is really strong compared to his. And I could go claim some space and put my bishop somewhere useful. Okay. As long as I don't drop a pawn or something here. Like, pawn takes, pawn takes, yeah. I'm still cool here. I haven't hung anything just yet. Okay, fine, we'll trade rooks. And then my knights, or my bishop's got a useful square. Okay, my bishop still has a useful square, though. And there it is. And this is an opposite color bishop endgame, right? Which means I just go take all his pawns, or start with that one. Um, okay. He's trying to add some pressure onto e4 with this king, but he still doesn't have enough. And now I just take on b3, right? Yeah, he should not have done that capture, by the way. Um, so yeah, study your opposite color bishop endgames. Everybody says they're drawn, but it's kind of a lie. Because there are some of them that are not drawn. All right, so he's, he's going to do this thing, or at least this is what he wants to do. So do I let him? Do I do bishop here, bishop there, and then I take, and he does this, and... No, because he ends up getting this pawn. So I'm going to uh, fluster him a bit. Um, okay. Yeah, now we just go take the b-pawn, right? Simple chess. All right, now he wants to play f5, although that in in this move it drops a pawn for him to play that. Um, I'm 
And by drops, I mean gambits. Because um, he actually did get something back. So my bishop guards the whole king side, so now my king can come around like this. Although he plays b3, but then my bishop takes it. Um, actually, yeah, we're going to barricade here. Um, alrighty then. Yeah, I guess I just have to agree to a draw here. I thought I had some kind of initiative because um, I control a little bit more space. No, I'm not going to push that. Pushing that would be dumb. So now he's thinking about does he want to push h5? I don't think he does, but I don't think it matters either. Oh, hang on. Hang on. we got some ideas here. There is still some cheese left in this position. Okay. Never mind. I was a bit slow on the uptake. Um... Yeah, push it to h6. Make it impossible for you to defend that. Well, I mean, the bishop can... There is one way that bishop can defend h6, but it's not pleasant at all. Um, okay. So now I have the outside passer, and it is on the correct color square. And now I've got an extra pawn to boot, although I don't want it. I'd rather have the passed pawn than an extra pawn. Oh, wait, no, I can't move my king out. Now I can move my king out. And this is why you study your endgames. So, remember all that talk about how they're drawn and stuff? Um, that's if you play them correctly. Um, okay, I need my king over on the b-file. Oops! Oh, damn it. After saying I need my king over on the B file, I got greedy. Okay. As far as he hasn't played bishop g3 just yet. Theoretically, this is still a draw, but it's kind of hard to hold. Yeah, he's been pushing me on the clock, and I've been blundering and blundering and blundering, because um, even I haven't fully studied this in quite some time. to study these. It's been too long. It's been far too long. Check. Okay. 
You don't suppose that he's gonna blunder this away. Oh shit. Don't do that again. Do not do that again. Um. Okay, so now my king can make it to c6. Making this draw just a tiny bit easier, more manageable. What am I talking about? This is a lot easier. Okay. Alright, so get the bishop on the other side of the pawn. Yeah, fine. We'll take a draw. So, um, yeah, guys, and, you know, if I had uh, installed endgame table bases, we could have Stockfish look at that, and it would come up with accurate analyses. So after two games of this in a row where I'm not winning, we're going to play an opening that wins. Um... So, yeah, here we're playing the Danish Gambit up a tempo. Threatening knight takes e5, which uh, wins yet another pawn. And this is strong because black, having moved second, doesn't get all the advantages that you'd normally get in a Danish Gambit. Um, so I can just munch stuff and not really worry. Okay, and we take there. And the only thing I gotta watch out for is this queen d5 not mating me. And to deal with that, you play d4. And yeah, I should be okay here. Got all my pieces developed, I'm up two pawns. I don't have the bishop here, but I'm still doing pretty good. So yeah, the Danish Gambit works better if you're playing the white pieces. Um, it doesn't work so well if you're down a tempo. So this would be like a reverse Danish Gambit. Um, <laughs> now I've actually, I've lost to the reverse Danish Gambit before, and that's why I know enough to uh, survive in the opening against it. Um, So I would call this theory, but I don't know what um, an actual chess expert would call it. Yeah, so I played Queen E2 because I have this rookie one resource to follow it up. If not for rookie one, then Queen E2 wouldn't be a good move. Um, it's possible it still isn't, but it might be. Okay, I'm more than a bit nervous about this situation with my knight loose and not really a strong square to go to. Um, I guess you could go back to, to d1. I was going to say c1, but this is d1 here. Um, Uh, sounds like people are having fun chatting. Which reminds me, I still don't have my chat window on stream yet. You know, one of these days I'm going to remember to take that, or get that taken care of. Um, but today we'll do without it, and perhaps that's for the best. Okay, so fine, we play e4. This blocks the diagonal and pretty much ties up all of my pieces. So now I gotta play rook e2 and rook e1 to follow it. Um, do I play queen g3? I am up two pawns, so I can pretty much play anything as long as I help exchange pieces. Um, so as long as everything gets liquidated, it doesn't really matter what I play. 
Okay. Oh, can I sack the E pawn? I think I can. Yeah, here we go. E pawn's hanging. Come on and take it. Yeah, so he steps out of knight f6 check. Um, Alright, e pawn's still hanging. Alright, so what's this link? Oh, huh. Totally not pre moving knight f6. I don't know, knight f6 isn't that bad. Other than. I don't know. Like, this is a confusing position. Here, knight f6 actually looks very strong. Um, makes me wonder if my opponent even considered it. And it looks so completely nuts. And I just don't see what he can do against it. So, here we go. Knight f6. Threatening queen g7. Threatening knight takes rook. Threatening taking on e4. And if he pushes g6, it threatens rook h7 mate. Um, I like this tactic. Please tell me it's sound. Uh, okay, so I'm in check. Uh, which way do I go? If I go king f1, he's got bishop d3. Ooh, this gets complicated. I'm so confused. I'm so, so, so confused. So, king f1, bishop d3, queen takes bishop. Uh, rook takes rook, king takes rook, rook takes queen, rook f8, mate. Um, it's as freaky as can be. I think king h one's also doable. If king h one's playable, then I don't need to calculate king f one. Um, I think this works, and I don't want to bore everybody by me just sitting there for a couple minutes. Um, okay, so go ahead, take my rook. I'll just do a rook trade. I'm totally not threatening anything here, other than you know rook f8 and queen g7. Um, you know, other than that, I'm not really threatening anything. Okay. GG! Hang on, we gotta analyze this game. As much as I appreciate people who know where the rematch button is, you can't just play a game like that and say, you know, I don't care about that game. Let's play another one. At least not when I win. When I win, I kind of have to enjoy the moment. Um, but yeah, reverse... Yeah, this... Uh, whatever gambit, I can't say that. Klusterbor gambit. Um, this, it works much better if black only gambits one pawn. This gambiting two pawns thing is something I've considered. Because I really want it to work, so I can play it in over-the-board events. Oh, I should have just taken on e5 and then later castled. Whatever. Um, here's the evaluation graph. Apparently I messed up some point after the opening. So yeah, d4 is a mistake, and I should just play d3. And against queen d5, then what? Uh, what happens here? Oh! This is different. My bishop covers all these squares. Um, yeah. This is different from positions where I can't do that. Okay, so yeah, d4 is unnecessary. Did not know that. Anyway, I develop my pieces and get a reasonable position. And just pretty much maintain that position forever. 
And my opponent makes a passive queen move, and I try to exploit it, and I should have just taken a pawn. Whatever. Um, oh, are you kidding me? This whole rook takes f7 was... Well, fine. I guess this is easier. This makes a lot more sense. Um, but after bishop takes, then my knight f6 is good. So, yeah. Alright, we're gonna play a variant, because obviously um, my playing standard is getting, I don't know, iffy at the moment here. Um, so let's play... where is it? King of the Hill. Oh, dude, I have a 2000 rating there. I don't want to lose that, do I? Whatever, I don't lose King of the Hill games. And even if I do lose, it's just a number. Alright, so how are we doing? Yeah, mate in 19. Who could possibly miss it? Um, uh, dot, dot, dot. Dot, 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 dot. You know, it's probably easier if I just countate on other people playing than if I'm playing. Hmm. All right, mainline novelty. Oh yeah, he knows what I'm talking about here when I play that. Um. <laughs> We're going to make this into a meme somehow. Um, wait, so... Here we go. E4. Just go wherever the wind may take us. <laughs> Trader Lynch sounds very confused by this. Oh, he actually took it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's legal. What was I planning? I was trying to scheme something here, but like queen c7, knight a6, yeah, my whole idea doesn't work. Um, so I should just settle for queen takes. And I get this weird looking position in which I'm not hanging my c-pawn. Yeah, that was the whole idea behind e4, is that I was going to take his knight. Yeah, I don't mind if you think it's unsporting, because, you know, it increases my chances for a king rush, right? That's interesting. My style here seems to be cutting off some of the letters of his name. So it says Mainline Novel, even though it links to Mainline Novelty. Yeah, this is King of the Hill. Yeah. That's why I offered the Queen trade, is um, because it's King of the Hill. Here he goes, here comes Speed Racer, he's a demon on wheels. I don't know the rest of the song. Something something someone. Um, but yeah. Here's the plan. It's to go King D3, King C4, King C5, King D6, King E5. That's the plan. Was it going to happen? I don't know. It might happen. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, this King Rush is pretty silly. Because I'm not sure how to follow it up. But it certainly increases the pressure in the position. So that's a thing. Okay. That's kind of almost threatening to take my pawn. Uh, let's just take this. And we'll go back and hit the knight. This is this is what we mean by tension, by the way. And um, yeah, I haven't calculated any concrete variations because here that's kind of my opponent's job. Um, but yeah, I think I'm doing good. It's a tough position, isn't it? Oh, he actually moved. Alright. So we take a knight. And take another knight. I don't know. It was a difficult position, though. So I think whatever you did was probably best. Um... It just didn't quite work out. Oh yeah, we got an Italian. Unless he plays the Evans Gambit. In which case we got an Evans Gambit. Oh, we got an Italian. Alright. I actually think this wins for white, or at least it does really well, so I probably shouldn't be playing this, but... You know, it's the Italian opening, and I just can't turn that down. Um, it's a really fun opening. It's also one of the few openings that I actually kind of sort of know the book for. Yeah, I know C6 isn't book, but I'm I'm introducing a mainline novelty here, so yeah. I play this how I want. Uh okay. That's interesting. Check. Okie dokie, so I think this increases pressure um, without surrendering anything. <laughs> yeah, Nico's got a point that if you play something that I haven't... Um, if you play the mainline, mainline, mainline Italian stuff, um, I will analyze that and try to figure it out. If you're playing this uh, sideline stuff, um, I'm more than happy to just win the game. Okay, so if I take c4, that doesn't quite work out. Um, 
Mm. All right, so here we go. Yeah, the the gambit that I play is dubious at best. Um Oh, right. So I can't take that knight. So, whatever. I forgot that I just can't take it. Well! Well, well, well. Um, how do we proceed here? Uh, am I missing something? What am I missing? <laughs> oh, poor, poor mainline novelty. I seem to have tricked him. Oh, oh, you, you thought that D5 was covered or something. Yeah. Now, this is why, like, king to D6 and king to E6 are really scary. These, specifically these two squares and these two squares, if a king ends up there... Or I'm one of these other two, but I mean that never happens. But if a king ends up in any one of those eight squares, you've got to constantly be looking for these crazy game over threats. Um, yeah. I'm 